Okay, this very brief example is about free body block diagrams. So usually when we see a free body diagram, we see a mass that has a force pulling on it. We can have more than one force, but at this particular example we're going to only see this F1, and the mass of this object is M1. Now, in order to know how the mass is moving, we actually need to know a little bit more. We need to know the direction in which we expect it to move. And so we label that particular axis as X1 here. So as we pull with force F1, we expect that mass M1 is going to move in a direction X1. And we can actually describe, using laws of physics, exactly how this is going to behave. Uh, by the way, we expect that X1 is equal to zero at the beginning of this bar. That's another important point. So we know exactly how this is going to behave based on Newton's law of translational motion which, if we look at it as the sum of all forces is mass times acceleration, we can go back at our diagram and see the direction in which we expect the mass to be moving, x1, and the force that's pulling on it, f1, and the mass that we see in the translational motion law comes from m1. So based on this, we can now produce the differential equations that are going to describe exactly how we expect this mass to be moving. So the a that we see in sum of all forces equals mass times acceleration comes from the second derivative of position. So the first derivative of x1, of course, is velocity with respect to time. The second derivative with respect to time is acceleration. So we can substitute that value for a into the equation for f1, and we get x1 double dot, by the way, is an abbreviation for a. So now we can express this as f1 equals m1 times x1 double dot. So this thing in the green box is the so-called equations of motion, or EOM. So this equation of motion tells us, with respect to time, how we expect the mass to be moving as we pull this force. We can also, for example, say, well, I just arbitrarily chose that x1 was in this direction. So we can reverse the direction of, F1, of x1, and we actually get a different equation of motion. So in this case, f1 is the negative of m1 times x1 double dot. That is, as we pull with force f1, we expect to see motion of M1 in the backwards direction that X1 indicates here.